Hurry up and slow down. This is an exclusive Tidy Tutor principle and one of the foundational 12 habits in Tidy Tutor University. I don't talk about it enough, although it is a foundational mainstay in my life and in my life-changing course. I've been reminded how important this principle habit is as I traveled to South Carolina recently. Sometimes when something is well known to us, we forget the profound impact that it had for us and upon us until it's realized again. This trip's timing, coupled with recent life changes and responsibilities, reminded me of this importance of this habit, and I'm going to share some more about it this week. I'm letting you know now so that when my mind inevitably tells me it's not as important as I think it is, I'll ignore it and do what I know I need to do regardless of what my mind is telling me, and I will share about it. So as I settle in at my best friend's house in South Carolina, after reaching one of the destinations on this trip, I thank you in advance for caring to hear more. Now, this is a video that is about the hurry up and slow down habit that I have inside of my Tidy Tutor University class, now known as the Tidy Tutor Master Class, that I figured I would just share now and I will just continue on with this as a little series. Thanks a lot and let me know what you think. Okay, right now we're going to talk about the hurry up and slow down habit. I know it sounds like it contradicts each other, but we need both of these things. We need to be able to hurry up when we need to, and we need to slow down sometimes. So let's get into this. First, the hurry up habit, okay? Now, we need to hurry up because we tend to dawdle. It is kind of like what we do, right? We wake up and we, you know, kind of meander. We get out of the room, we get out of the bedroom, we go into the bathroom. We do things in a little bit of a sing-songy kind of way. And what we need to do is we need to hit the ground running. We need to wake up knowing that our life is important. What we have to do is important. Our just living, our job, whatever it is that we are doing, living our life is important. And that doesn't portray an important situation when we are waking up and getting out of bed and moving as if nothing really matters. So the word dawdle, this is the definition of it right there. Linger, dally, take one's time, drag one's feet, be slow, waste time, kill time, fritter time away, idle, delay, procrastinate, stall, hang fire, make time, putter around, dilly-dally, let the grass grow under one's feet. So what I've done is I've taken some of the words out of there because I don't believe all of those words pertain to us. So here are some of the words that we tend to identify with, okay? We linger, we take one's time, we can be slow, we dally, we procrastinate, we dilly-dally, we stall, and we drag our feet. That's not the way we want to live our life. And it's not the way that the organizationally gifted people live their lives. Having those qualities are not going to get us where we want to go. Those qualities do not serve us. We want to adopt the qualities of those people that we know that get things done. So we want to identify with what it is we want to be and fake it till we make it. So here is what I want you to do. Pretend that you've gotten a role in a play and you are portraying someone you need to be like. I have done this for years. Please know that I never ask you to do anything that I haven't done. Everything that I share with you is tried and proven, and I've done it forever. This works. Now, say my sister-in-law, Lori. I use her as an example for me in my life because I've stayed with her before. She lives in Florida, and me and my family went down there and visited, and I've been with her in her home for a week, you know, waking up and living life. And she hits the ground running. So I think about her when I get up in the morning and I get going because she, this is what she does. She gets up, you know, I don't know what she does in her bedroom, but 
When she comes downstairs, she looks adorable. Her hair's in a ponytail. She's got on something, you know, very cool, decent, casual, but nice to wear. She goes right to the washer and dryer, and she gets her day started. So it's great for me to think about Lori when I get up in the morning and I need to get stuff done, which is every day, right? I also think about my sister-in-law, Dorothy, and my sister Maria. Now, the reason that I think about Dorothy and Maria is, well, of course, they are both organizationally gifted, but also they both have qualities that are different from the other. So Maria, she gets stuff done. She is self-motivated. She doesn't need to get anybody involved in anything. She just gets started. There are certain things that in my life, because of who we are, we tend to allow things much longer than the organizationally gifted would. So here's one example. Let's say um, here in New Jersey, I'm sure it's like this in many other parts of the world and in the United States, that there isn't central air conditioning in everybody's home. The homes are really old. So you have an air conditioner that goes in the window. Well, after the summer's over, you take it out and you put it somewhere. Well, it's common that, you know, you might have somebody be able to come and take it out because they're very heavy. So maybe one of your kids or a neighbor or somebody will come and take out the air conditioner and then put it down right there in front of the window. And if there is not time to put it away or bring it where it needs to go, it could stay there for a long time before us organizationally challenged types will even notice it. After a while, it will just become white noise in that room. Well, I know definitely for all three of these women that that will, would not fly. They would never live that way. It gets done and it gets done now. There's a certain standard that they live by. So now I would put on my sister Maria in that case. If there was were are things that are in my world that are kind of out of place because of maybe a dejuncting process, a moving from one room to another, a switching room, say I wanted to make a bedroom an office. Um, If there was, um, let's say, a renovation going on, and so there were a lot of things that had to be taken out of the house and put on the back deck or something, waiting for it to you know, be brought to the dump or something picked up, something like that. Well, I would put on my sister Maria because she is a go-getter. She is a mover. And so I would put her on as uh, as if I was taking a part in the play. My sister-in-law, Dorothy, she has the qualities of, like, delegating. She's very good at being uh, uh, delegating. I guess what I could say is she's good at being bossy. So when I need to be bossy, I can put her on as a role and kind of like switch the way I normally think and see and do things to a way that I could decide to. So let's pretend that you're when you're doing things and we're working on this change that we are playing a part and there is a role to play. And so let's say getting up in the morning, I would put Lori on. I would put Lori on and I'd say, okay, I'm Lori getting up in the morning, my feet hit the ground running. And it's easy for me to move ahead, doing what I'm doing, changing the way I used to do things. And say there's another thing like finishing a project. That would be great for me to imagine on Maria or Dorothy. And I would just think, all right, well, how would Maria and Dorothy see this? And then, you know, it's really true that I literally will see things differently. Um, Recently, there was a renovation project going on. And the reason I gave the example of things on a deck is because we emptied out the kitchen onto the deck that was right outside of the kitchen And even there was a toilet bowl that we um, took out from the second floor. And at the same time, we put a new toilet bowl in. And that was all on the deck. And it was there for a few days. And one day, I'm looking out the window, and I saw it. Because before that, it made sense to me. Okay, well, this has to be there for now because we're doing this work. But then after a little while, it was there too long. 
And my way of being would be able to just see it as white noise, not even really notice it after a while. So what I did was I pretended I was Maria and I went out there and I was able to see what it was that I needed to do and also see things in a different way than I did before because I allowed myself to think like somebody else. You can do this too. I'm telling you it works. Now, the slow down habit. We're going to talk about that right now, okay? Now, the reason that we need to slow down is because a lot of times we move too quickly, which is totally opposite than what I was just talking about. And most of the time, this is when we are either, you know, at a, at a checkout or we're leaving the house, you know, we have to go somewhere. We'll speed up. We'll move way too fast. Now, at the checkout, how often has it been that you've left without the bag? You've left without your change. You left without your keys. You left without your phone, right? You left without the thing that you bought, which is what I meant about the bag. And then we had to go back in the store. Did I leave my phone here? Have, did you see my keys? Oh, I forgot my watermelon or I forgot whatever it was that you purchased, right? And the reason we do that is part of the, you know, the word slob, S-L-O-B, spontaneous, lighthearted, optimistic, and beloved that we are, that we're really considerate of other people. So we feel like, oh, I better hurry up. There's somebody right behind me. But this is when we want to realize that things don't take as long as we think they do. Give yourself the time. Slow down. Do you have your keys? Did you put your receipt where it belongs? Do you have what it was that you purchased? Do you have your phone? Is Did you get the change? Is your debit card back where it needs to be, right? We don't need to leave a store like a crazy person holding on to all of these things and then having to run back in the store when we forget something. Slow down takes care of that problem. Okay, so now the elephant in the room, our warp perception of time. This is a good time to count Mississippis or count elephants because we think everything takes so long that we rush. But here's the thing. If you actually will take the time to do one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, or one elephant, two elephant, three elephant, four elephant, as you're getting what you need together, to walk out of the store or to drive away from the checkout window or the teller window when you maybe go to the drive through of the bank, right? Anything that we have to do that makes us need to complete something, get the money from the teller, put it in our purse, get back our ID or our debit card, put it where it belongs in our purse and then drive away. Get the change from the teller. Make sure we have our keys. Make sure we have our bag before we walk away. Count those elephants. It will be 10 seconds or less. The person behind you can wait that 10 seconds. You know that you've been behind someone that did the thing that they needed to do before they walked out of the store. Nobody died. It's okay. And you can do this. And once you realize that it is such a short time, you'll do it more often. Another reason for us to slow down or instance where we need to slow down is when we leave the house. This is a great example of that. It's my daughter, Emily, back when she was in high school, and she was just hurrying up to leave the house. Normally, she had a daily routine, and she followed it. And when she followed it, she left the house nice and orderly. But when she didn't, she was rushing and trying to get out and grabbing everything that she could grab and looking like that when she left. I know you could relate. So this particular day, I walked out the back door and took the car around waiting for her to walk out. And when I saw her coming down that path like that, I had to get out and get a picture because this is classic. We need to slow down when we're leaving the house. It might feel like we need to rush because we you know, taking too much time or something like that. We need to get somewhere, but it never saves us time. We always have to go back and get something that we forgot or drop something on the way, right? So there's one instance where we need to slow down. Now, 
I use Lisa as an example for slow down because she has shown me that she takes her time and it's always such a wonderful thing because she's always got everything together. Lisa is minimalist and she is organizationally gifted. So I can put her on as a role when I feel like I'm racing because there's so much to do, but I know that I just need to slow down, take it down a notch, and then I will be Lisa. So here's an example of leaving the car. We would meet somewhere and say, could be at Starbucks. I would pull in, get out of the car, and I'd be waiting for her. And I'm thinking, what is she doing in there? And so this is what she does in there. She makes sure she has her keys. She makes sure she has her wallet. She makes sure she has her glasses. She makes sure she has her phone. If there's any kind of you know, tissues or garbage that she needs to throw out, if she's had a water bottle in there, she will take all of that and leave the car with it. It keeps the car orderly and it keeps her from being one of those people that are kind of like always all over the place that we tend to be like, right? And this is something that we could still do with the Mississippis or the the elephants counting, elephants counting Mississippis and realize that this does not take much longer and it gives back so much to us because we're prepared, we've got what we need and the car stays nice and so many other things just fall into place beautifully when we slow down. So think of who it is that you can put that role on when you need to slow down. Now commit this to um, the tracking sheets if it turns out that this is something that's difficult for you. We want to use our tracking sheets, our star chart or our heart chart, whenever there's something that we struggle with. And this way we can be committed to keeping it up and remembering that this is something that I need to practice. Now the heart chart are seven days and the star chart is 30 days. So we would use 10 days at a time. That's the 30 days, a whole month. So you use the heart chart when you know you won't do things daily. Like you're not going to do things daily, but you need to get something done a few times a week. For example, if you're doing something Monday fr and Friday or every Monday, Wednesday and Friday, for example, that's when you would use the heart chart. You would do that for, say, exercising, walking, decluttering. If you commit to decluttering every Saturday, Sunday, and Tuesday night, say, you would use the heart chart for. The star chart is for things that you're doing daily. And so these examples I'm giving you here are the horizontal um, star and heart chart. You see that here are, is a vertical one, it's a horizontal one. There's more than one template for this. Um, so this is what you want to do if you're struggling with anything, but in this particular lesson, with the hurry up and slow down. I am committed to hurrying up, and I would use the daily for this. I am committed to slowing down, and depending on the circumstance. Now, this is a suggestion with the star and heart chart. This is what I do. I have them in a frame. And I use a Sharpie and I color it in like that. This way, I don't always have to print things out and I can practice what I'm practicing up until the time I don't need to practice it anymore, that things are going good. Or I could just continue to track it, finish it for the month, wipe it off and start again. You would wipe it off with Windex, alcohol, um, hairspray takes it off of the glass. Okay. All right. So I really like doing this and it's a cool thing if you want to um, get the star chart and the heart chart inside of a frame. Now, what we want to do is think about the mindset work we had from the beginning. Remember from the mindset work that we did, we've got to change our minds about how we believe ourselves to be. Keep up with the exercise from our mindset work where we contradicted the negative things that we said about ourselves. Remember, three things negative that you say about yourself 
contradict it and say those things often until those things become your norm and the way you think about yourself. The same way we've created the identity we've been in the past is the same way we create the new one. What has worked in the negative will work in the positive. What was created could be recreated. Okay, so remember that. And if you need to, go back to the beginning portion of where this lives in your identity portion of our class and listen again and resurrect it if you need to. If this image doesn't work for you, like maybe you're looking at this and you're like, I don't want to identify with that, then draw from what will, okay? Think about those people that would inspire you to be able to take on that role and say, okay, just got a part in a play and I am being my sister. I am being my mother. I am being my best friend. Whoever it is that inspires that action that you want to emulate, use that. Okay. Whatever works. Okay. So that's the hurry up and slow down habit. See you on the next video. If you like this video and it helped you, stay tuned for the series that I'm going to do on this hurry up and slow down habit. As you probably noticed, there is never an ad on my channel. Help me keep it that way by liking, subscribing, and sharing. Leaving a comment is also extremely helpful. Let me know what you think. Thanks, and I'll see you on the next video.